For most of us, Genesis 1 is all about creation, but it isn't. It is about principles that guide our relationship with God, that makes our life meaningful. And today, I'll be sharing with you three of these principles that when applied in your lives can transform your life forever. But just before we dive into the miracle of creation, let me refresh your mind about the ideas behind miracles. In John chapter 11, Lazarus, a beloved friend of Jesus, was sick. That wasn't the problem. The only problem was the miracle working Jesus, a friend to the family, was out of town. Mary and Martha sent message to Jesus. If perhaps he could cut short his trip and return home to heal his beloved friend Lazarus. But Christ continued in his missionary work. He did not come. He knew what would happen to Lazarus, but tarried and so it was. Lazarus died. After four days, Christ returned and went to the home of Lazarus to console the grieving family. He already knew that Lazarus was dead, but beyond consolation, Christ was visiting for a mission to teach them a lesson. When Christ came, what he did was beyond the disappointment Mary and Martha could have felt not seeing Christ come to share that moment of pain, that moment of trouble with them. It was also beyond their expectation of whatever the presence of Christ would bring. Jesus came back to raise Lazarus back to life. Long story short, Christ called Lazarus who was dead and he came back to life. But do you know what? The catch of this story is not a bad Christ resurrecting Lazarus. It is a bad Christ teaching Mary and Martha and those around that he, Jesus, is the resurrection and life. This is the onion of every miracle. The primary reason for the resurrection was to tell them that Christ is the resurrection and the life. Raising Lazarus was just a secondary reason. Similarly, the miracle of creation is not about creation. It is about God and his principles. It is the grand opening to the revelation of God. Beyond what he did or what he does, it is more about who he is. And just don't forget that. Now that we know what Genesis chapter 1 is about God, what are those principles? The first is the power of the first four words. Those four words containing 17 letters. In the beginning, God. If we understand the power in those four words containing 17 letters in English, it is able to transform our lives forever when properly applied. Just before we go deep into this principle, let me tell you about David. So there was a time David returned back to Zikla where he was camping with his men. But when he came back to his greatest dismay, so Amalekites came and took away his wives, his children, his properties, plundered the village. The camp was in disarray. People were agitated. They were ready for war. They were ready for action. But do you know what David did first? He called Abiata the priest. He said, bring me an effort. Let me consult God. Should I go after these men? Will I overtake them or not? And God spoke. Pursue the invaders. You will catch them and you will overtake them. And when David did, David caught up with them, recovered all the looted and defeated this man. Little wonder David is a man after God's own heart. The success of David was tied to the very fact that David understood that everything starts with God. And when we start with God, success is guaranteed in the beginning. God. This is the fundamental principle you must not violate. Everything starts with God and everything should start with God. Now, here is the second principle. The second principle is a fact we can find in our text that God created everything ex nihilo, out of nothing. Now, what does it mean for God to create out of nothing? You know, some years ago, 
in the 18th century, there was a man named John Newton. He was an ordinary man, although a captain to a slave ship. He was involved in what the average captain of his days would be involved in. The ordinary life of immorality, of alcohol, of women, of sex. The lives of people do not mean so much to him, especially the lives of the black folks he was helping to transport. His life was plain ordinary. If he had lived like that throughout life, nothing would have been known about him. But one day, while he was in the high sea, he encountered a storm. So scary that he was praying all he could mutter for hours was Lord have mercy. All through his life, he has lived with that reverence for God. But in this grand moment, he was begging God for mercies. For hours, he was struggling with his sheep and praying fervently for God to have mercy on him. You know what? The storm stopped. His life and those of his crewmen and all he was transporting was saved. But that is not the main point. The main point is that John Newton got home and never returned back to the water as a captain. He surrendered his life to the captain of the universe. John Newton became a clergyman. From an ordinary life, God began to transform him. And through John Newton, God gave us amazing grace. That's a beautiful song. But beyond amazing grace, the impact of John Newton on the life of John Wilberforce led to the parliamentary struggle that eventually ended slave trade in the world. God transformed John Newton out of a life of nothingness to a person that you and I can still talk about today. God creates ex nihilo out of nothing. Folks, the revelation of the person of God is also the revelation of his power and of his principles. The God we serve is a God that can make triumph out of trials. He can make testimonies out of testing moments. He can make a message out of a mess. Irrespective of how your life has been, irrespective of your failures, irrespective of the characterization people have given to you because how you have lived, the places you have gone to, the people you have associated with, the Lord can make a beautiful message out of your life. God is up to something. If you surrender to him like the Lord indeed, just watch, I will transform you from nothing to something fantastic. The revelation of his person is also the revelation of his power and his process. You see, in the wisdom of God, He sometimes creates things in their unfinished states because in His process, He is up to something. Your life may be in a state where you describe it as nothing, having nothing, of no what, but God is up to something. God can transform your troubles, your traumas, your pains to a beautiful story. So don't give up. He's still in the business of creating something out of nothing. The last principle I want to share with you is so important that if you miss this one, you are missing something so, so significant to your life. Many persons have committed suicide because they do not understand this principle. Many persons have left their homes, left their children, left their marriage, given up so soon because they failed to understand this fundamental principle. Look at the depressing description of reality in the beginning of Genesis. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Darkness was everywhere, and perhaps that best describes your life. Formless and void, without meaning and purpose. When people tell your story, they use different descriptions that you will even not want to hear. But you know what? That is really not the end of the story. Because the intervention of God is what everything. What God wants you to know is that irrespective of how your life is at the moment, when it comes in, meaning comes in. When God comes in, beauty comes in. When God comes in, 
purpose comes in. So don't give up. Learn to wait because God is going to intervene. When God said, let there be light, there was light. But there was a point where there was meaninglessness. There was a point where there was formlessness. There was a point where all of reality is for. And God said, let there be light and there was light. The intervention of God is what everything waits for it. Friends, in our world today, it is so easy to be fixated on the food and forget about the chef. That is the reason why our Christianity is so shallow and hollow. Many will do anything for bread, even if it means crucifying the bread of life. People are so concerned about solution, not minding the source of that solution. People are so concerned about the blessings of God, they are not concerned about the God who blesses. Like every miracle, the purpose, the meaning in creation is not creation, but God. We must focus on the one who created. First, before we look at the creation, we must focus on the one who provides bread. First, before the bread we thank him for. If we miss this, we have missed everything. As creation points us to the creator, so every of our need and everything around us should point us to our God. The idea God wants us to capture from Genesis 1 is not about the time, not the dates, not about the things that have been created, but about himself, the creator. That is the focus of Genesis 1. Remember, a tree that forgets its source will eventually wither. Don't forget about God. Truth is, Genesis 1 is profound. And any time we surrender our hearts and implore the Holy Spirit to open our eyes to the deep truth of the scriptures, especially in the book of Genesis, we begin to see layer upon layer of inspiration. We have just looked at Genesis 1 to 3, but we know there are many more principles. If you want us to touch on some other principles from the book of Genesis, just say it in the comment section. If the other principles you can glean from the book of Genesis 1, please write them also in the comment section. We want to learn also from you. We want to learn from you as well. Lastly, if you have any comments, if you have questions or concerns from this message, do where to write it in the comment section so that we can interact and begin to understand the word of God better. But if you don't have anything to write and you know you have been blessed by this message, just praise God by typing praise the Lord or hallelujah in the comment section. I believe God has spoken from his very heart to yours today. And I want to trust God that you will be a willing ambassador to share this message to someone or to some persons within your circle. And I want to believe you will ask them to subscribe so as to join this community that is being enriched through God's truth from God's very own heart. As you do so, I know the Lord will bless you. In Jesus' name, have a great week.